Pandemic Season IPB on the day. We have our week five, or excuse me, week six team prep versus tokens, uh, Salaz and Salazzle. So currently, I don't. Let me actually check his record because I'm on the spreadsheet. I just didn't click on his team name. So he's currently two and three, uh, a little bit of a better record than us at one and four. But um, I'd love to be able to just get a couple wins in because we need to get back on a good track. So, anyways, uh, yeah, he's got a pretty, pretty good team. It's gonna be difficult for my matchup. So he's got Tapu Coco, Tornadus, Don Fan. I should say Dor Tornadus T. Uh, Tangro, Three Uniclus, Me and Chow Sneasel, Dredigan, Armaldo, Dublade, and Volcarona. So overall you can see the speed tiers are very very similar. You've got a couple that are above 100 and then about half that are above 100 and the rest of them are 50 or below. So um, overall there's a couple Pokemon that I'm bringing this week that I don't have to worry about putting a ton of uh, speed into because I don't need to worry about out speeding. So that's pretty cool stuff. So uh, yeah. Anyways, uh, overall, Tapu Koko is just kind of an issue for my team. Obviously, I do have things like Gliscor, I have Mudsdale, uh, I have a couple different Pokemon that can counter in that sense. From Calx, a couple that are weak to the uh, Fairy can live a hit or two, or can live a hit from even a Life Orb Coco, so you know. Anyway, um, Overall, I don't really know what the biggest threat is. Ryu Nicholas is going to be the hardest to take down, I feel. I'm just going to have to hit that thing super hard because I don't have a ton, like, you know, for it. Alright, so starting off here, we have Vesuvius the Volcanion. Uh, the, one of the first times it's been the first Pokemon selected for the week. Um, we just like the matchup in general against his entire team because he doesn't have anything that's, like, super amazing against it, especially with the Wakan Mary. Um... Because obviously Tapu Koko's uh, electric attacks will be reduced by that. If Ryu Nicholas gets Thunderbolt, that'll be weakened too. Um, overall, this thing just hits his entire team for at least neutral damage with this moveset. And many for super effective damage, so it's very, very nice when it comes to that. Um, yeah, so Walk on Berry, obviously to reduce the damage from the Tapu Koko. Shaka could have been helpful here too, but we just felt Walk on was a better fit because then this thing could just do a sh crap ton of damage to Tapu Koko. So anyways here, we have Earth Power, Flame Thirst, Steam Eruption, and Stone Edge. So the main reason we're carrying Stone Edge is for uh, Volcarona. We probably don't even need it though because Steam Eruption will probably do more. Uh, well, it won't do more, but it'll, do, it'll probably still be able to take it out. Um, Overall, with this moveset, it hits basically everything on his team for at least neutral damage, which is really nice. Yeah, nothing resists the combination of all those four moves, so it's like, it's really good in that sense. Um, and Vesuvius just overall is just going to be super a, a super good help in this in this matchup. So, pretty cool stuff. As you see, we're running a Rash Nature, um, so I can run so I don't lower my attack from the Stone Edge anymore, uh, or I don't lower my attack from the Stone Edge. I'm thinking about it, I may end up going something like, uh, rather than it being this being the minus in defense here, so that it ends up being a mild nature, so uh, my special defense is higher, because my special defense overall is lower on Volcanion, so you know, that's probably what I'll do, we'll go with that. So um, anyways, yeah, that's pretty much it for Vesuvius, it's pretty simple, this thing's just a wall breaker, and it works, it matches up well against the squad, so pretty cool stuff. Next up is a Pokemon who hasn't come in a couple weeks, Tobin the Gliscor with the Toxic Orb Poison Heal, he turns Stone into Earthquake and Knock Off. So, I was mentioning earlier how about some of the Pokemon we didn't need to invest a lot of speed. So this thing, uh, it outspeeds literally everything that it can without having to invest in speed. So that is really nice. Provided he doesn't scarf one of his base 50s like Don Fan or freaking Rhea Nicholas or something like that. So anyway, I just I don't need the speed investment. So that allows me to put a lot more in bulk. So I put a lot in special defense here. Uh, so this thing can kind of be my special wall. Uh, it can wall Tapu Koko super well. Uh, Hidden Power Ice would be something that it can still probably take really well with all that special defense investment and then the rest in HP after maxing out attack so this thing is gonna hit like a truck so we have U-turn so it's just I can get a nice pivot off uh, it allows me a super effective hit against the Sneasel and the Tangrowth which is very nice Stone Edge obliterates uh, Volcarona that's mainly the reason I'm bringing it hits Armaldo for neutral at the very least uh, Sneasel for super, super effective uh, Tornadus for super effective Tapu Koko gets like uh, destroyed by Earthquake an earthquake hits most of his team uh, for at least neutral. It hits literally everything. Nothing avoids it except for Tornadas, 
and everything else it hits. So it's very cool in that sense. Knockoff is going to be super nice for the Ryu Nicholas. That's the main reason we're bringing it. Uh, if I can get like a big knockoff on that thing with max attack uh, and Adam and nature provided he isn't like a bold max defense nature. Uh, it could be really, really good. This thing could just run through that Rhea Nicholas, and that could be a huge threat out of the way, like, really quickly. Because Rhea Nicholas is probably the biggest threat, I would say, on his team. And what's funny is I ended up getting, helping him get Rhea Nicholas earlier, uh, before the season started by trading Lucario to him. So, you know, pretty cool stuff, and I think that's about it for Gliscor here. Pretty simple. Uh, next up is facing off against... Her original team, Azura the Azelf with the Expert Belt, Taunt, Stealth Rock, Dazzling Gleam, and Shadow Ball. This thing is an anti-lead Azelf, uh, allows me to get up taunts, uh, I can get a taunt up on the Dawn Fan, or something like that. Uh, anything that wants to decide to get up rocks like the Drudigan, Dazzling Gleam is really nice for the Drudigan. Uh, that's the main reason we're bringing that. Shadow Ball is, uh, so the Ryu Nicholas cannot completely wall Azelf here, because uh, once again, obviously that thing is an issue. And with Dads and Gleam, Azura can't really touch it. Stealth Rocks allow me to get up rocks. Obviously, it does 50% to Volcarona. Uh, a couple of other Pokemon take at least 25, so that's really nice. This thing speed ties with Sneasel, so I had to run max speed with a timid nature. Um, I would have preferred to speed creep something, and I would... What was... What's 105? Something is 105 uh, that I sped crept with another Pokemon. Me and Xiao, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, uh, yeah, so I would have sped crept, but I didn't end up having the opportunity to because I need to make sure I at least tie with that thing because Dazzling Gleam should do a ton of damage so pretty cool stuff so this thing obviously is made to speed tie with the eight or not the Azel but the Sneasel and provided if he doesn't bring a max uh, max speed jolly or doesn't bring it at all then this thing should outspeed pretty much everything except for Coco and Tornadus and yeah this thing's just max special attack so it can hit hard as well Expert Belt just to boost the power of super effective moves uh, we were thinking about originally doing Cold Berberry the may change, I may end up making a Colberry that will lower the damage from a knockoff from the Dawn Fan or the, I think Tangaroo gets knockoff too, as well as Mian Xiao. So a bunch of things actually get knockoff, which is, I forgot about. Anyway, a uh, Colberry might be a good idea for that in that sense, but um, yeah, so that is it for, pretty sure that's about it for Azov. So yeah, next up we have Camilla the Haxorus, another Fire Emblem character making its way in. <laughs> There's four of them in this team. I'm just gonna let you know that now. We've already seen three of them <laughs> Anyways, Haxorus here is the Rosalie Berry with Earthquake, Shadow Claw, Dragon Dance, Dragon Claw. This thing is made to be a setup sweeper. It matches up super well against a squad and um, Just overall if I can get up a couple Dragon Dances and outspeed things like the Coco It can just do a ton of damage. Earthquake does uh, a lot of damage to the Coco. That's the main reason I'm bringing it. Uh, Shadow Claw is mainly for the Ryu Nicholas, so I can hit that thing hard as well as the Deblade. I can also hit that thing with an Earthquake, and Earthquake is technically powerful. But if I get the crit, then Shadow Claw will be more, do more damage. But uh, Dragon Claw, obviously being stabbed, the only thing immune to it would be the uh, the Coco, and I have Earthquake for that, so that's very nice. And I have the Rosalie Berry, so I can live a Dazzling Gleam no matter what. Um, and yeah, I'm going through this pretty quickly. I just feel like we have a very solid strategy here. Now, this thing is the fast, is built to be the, f be able to outspeed his entire squad uh, with one Dragon Dance. So that's why that amount of speed is in there because his fastest Pokemon um, ends up being 200, which is, let's see. Okay, so we can actually make this speed stat go down to 133, which means we can save a ton of uh, and ton of EVs which is amazing because I can literally max basically max out his HP now but we're not gonna because we're gonna make it odd so we can live uh, hits better or something like that and I'll put the rest let's see I can only only one and there we go that works we'll do that um, so I did a little math and I was thinking about 150 times 1.5 without speed but I only need 133 because with one dragon dance up this thing outspeeds his entire squad uh, meaning Coco which is base 200 or 200 with a, uh, a max speed max speed nature max speed you know so pretty cool stuff um, I'm gonna have to obviously update the, <laughs> the thing I gave Eric so he doesn't gen the incorrect team and I'll have to make him regen I don't want him to do that I don't want him to have to do that anyways um yeah so once again this thing is built to outspeed everything with a with one dragon dance up this thing give it max HP 
or max attacks so this thing can hit like a truck a lot of hp investment and making it odd investment so this thing can live mo more stealth rockets it's one extra stealth rock and moves that do half your health like nature's madness for example which he could bring on his top uh, on his coco and uh yeah so this thing overall is just meant to be a nice wall breaker i ran a nerd because uh, literally having a uh, mole breaker does nothing for me this week so uh, why not prevent something from eating you know if his, he decides to bring Drudda gun with a Haban berry for whatever reason so <laughs> you know what might as well and yeah so next up we have a member who has not seen battle this season because I only got it a couple weeks ago. We have Bubblegum the Clefairy with the Eevee Light, Magic Guard, Moonblast, Shadow Ball, Ice Beam, Wish. So this thing is incredible. Like, its moveset is absurd. So the way that I built this thing is it to be bulky on all sides. Max HP with a with 68 in both defenses and a, and a calm nature. So the special defense gets boosted more. Uh, the main reason for that, I don't remember exactly what it was. I mean, he has a lot of special threats. That's what it was. Because he's got the, like, the Tornadas, the Tapu Koko, the Ryu Nicholas, and, um... Stuff like that that can hit super hard on the special side. I put a decent amount of investment in special attacks. This thing can hit uh, hard with its Moonblast, Shadow Ball, and Ice Beam, which do which cover the majority of his entire squad for super effective damage, which is really nice. Armaldo and Volcarona are the only two that it doesn't have super effective coverage against, so that is really nice. I guess Coco, too, excuse me, but, you know. Um, yeah, that's actually really good. Clefairy is going to be really nice. These things just have such a good moveset. I can learn Flamethrower, Ice Beam, Thunderbolt. Like, it's crazy. And then Moonblast, which is like the best, one of the best moves in the game. Anyway, uh, the last four went into speed because I literally can't put it anywhere else. And you know what? If he has something else that's base 35, the blade. So I could outspeed, possibly outspeed the blade because if he doesn't invest any speed in it. So, you know, uh, just that one extra point could make a difference. So, anyways, uh, yeah, we're just, this thing is made to be bulky. Um, with those three coverage moves, obviously hits everything, almost everything for super effective damage. The Magic Guard is mainly for if he decides to status me with something. I don't really know what exactly. I don't really need anything else, in all honesty. Like, maybe if he decides to trick me a Life Orb to get rid of my Eviolite, whatever Pokemon can learn trick, if any, um, then I just get a Life Orb and I can, uh, you know, hit this, hit hard with the Magic Guard. Or I can hit over the life orb and not take the damage. So you never know. This thing also won't take damage from Stealth Rock. So that is good to know. And uh, yeah, so that is Clefairy. I'm excited to use it. I actually really love Clefairy. It's such a cute Pokemon. And it's so niche. It's just, it's literally a mini Clefable. And I think it will do hopefully well. Because I need a Fairy type and this was the best one left. And I have to say with the Eevee Light, not bad at all. So pretty cool stuff. That is Clefairy for us. And finally this week... He did not come last week, um, yeah, as you'll see, the Team Captain Electros did not come this week. We have Atlas the Terrakion with the Rockium Z, uh, Rock Polish, Stone Edge, Earthquake, Poison Jab. So, we were debating, uh, among a Poison Z crystal, mainly for the Tangrowth. Um, I don't think Tangrowth can one-shot me anyway. Now, the whole reason that I wanted to do Rockium Z, because Rockium Z obviously does, obviously does a lot more damage to Ryu Nicholas, because once again, that thing is a problem. Because otherwise, Terrakion matches up super well against his entire squad, save the, what, the Coco, not the Coco, the Dawn Fan, and the Tangrowth. It really matches up well against everything else. Uh, Rock Polish is obviously to get some speed so I can literally outspeed everything. This thing is already built to speed creep whatever was 105, which I believe was a Mian Chao. So if he decides to bring a non-Scarf Mian Chao, this thing should outspeed it, which will be very nice. Um... And yeah, so that's why we're running the amount of speed with the Jolly Nature. I put the rest in defense so this thing can maybe live an Earthquake better or something like that. Because it already has a decent enough special bulk to live these special hits that I worry about. So, pretty cool stuff. Uh, max attacks, so this thing can hit like a truck. Uh, rock Polish, obviously, so I can get uh, faster than everything. And then just run through his squad. Stone Edge, once again, works super well against the Tornadas. Hits Sneasel for super effective damage. Armaldo, Volcarona, Obliterates. Um, what else does it hit? It doesn't hit everything, anything else for super effective damage, but it hits basically everything else for at least neutral, which is really good. I believe, what, Mian Shao resist it, Dawn Fan resist it, and I believe that's it. 
the Blake 2, excuse me. But yeah, overall, Stone Edge just does really nicely against this team. Earthquake, once again, just it hits literally everything except for Tornadas, and it's very nice. Uh, ma it's mainly for the Coco, because uh, I didn't really need anything else. And yeah, Poison Jab is mainly for the Re... not the Rena, because the Tangrowth. Rena, because it's right below Tangrowth, so... Um, it's mainly for that, so I can just do more damage to that if I can. And once again, the Rock Game Z is just so I can do the most damage with the Z move, because... Uh, Stone Edge is technically my most powerful move because it also gets the stab. That is it. So that is the team we are bringing this week. So I really hope you enjoyed it. Did like, appreciate it. In the description below, you'll find a link to his channel as well as the IPVL Twitter. Hopefully we can come back with a win. We've lost three in a row, which has not been good. Uh, so hopefully we can bounce back. So thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Did like, appreciate it. Subscribe for more. Let's go ahead and play. What is going on dudes and I was 13 and welcome to the end of IPBL Season 1. So we only ended up playing half the season, which is unfortunate. The way things worked out, a lot of people weren't scheduling their battles, a lot of people just went off without a word. Um, so we weren't able to, a lot of people weren't able to get battles in. Uh, the guy who was supposed to battle this week ended up forfeiting, so uh, that's why we have no battle this week. And I have the team, I had already had the team prep video done. For whenever we battled, because we were already behind, so you know, uh, it's it's frustrating, I was hoping that we could do better, we ended up 2-4, and four. um, wasn't a great season, in all honesty, uh, I'm not very happy with it, but at the same time it's over now, which is a good thing, because Pokemon's been one of those things that's been, just, I'm not that interested at the moment, and, uh, yeah, it, it sucks to keep forcing it, really, Pokemon-wise, uh, I'm just not enjoying playing Pokemon, but, Anyways, uh, yeah, I just wanted to let you all know that because there is no more for this season, which actually sucks. So let